Hi everyone. As a yoga enthusiast and certified yoga teacher, I gotta say, nothing annoys me more than spiritual anti-veganism. Recently, a popular yoga influencer known as Yoga Girl announced that she is no longer vegan. She explained her reasoning in her podcast, Conversations from the Heart. And let's just say, it was so ridiculous, you'd think it was a parody. She described having some health problems, just not feeling her best, and her naturopathic doctor suggested she try introducing eggs back into her diet. She was hesitant, as she'd been vegan for almost a decade, but decided that if the universe gave her a sign, she would be open to it. A few weeks later, she's at a farm with her daughter, who finds an egg in the chicken coop and hands it to her. She took this as her sign from the universe. We come home, and guess what I did? Yes, I put the egg on my altar. <laughs> I put the egg on my altar and I pray. <laughs> yeah. And I can laugh, I giggle at myself now because it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I really prayed. I really, like I put Leia down to sleep that night and I was drinking tea and I had the egg there like next to my crystals and like my things. And what I really felt, like what I knew is if I go this route and I eat this one egg you know, which will be the first non-vegan thing I've had in like a decade, forever. <laughs> if, if I go down this road, it's like, I kind of knew there's no turning back. You know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm either going down this road, staying in my vegan box, or I'm not. And I really had to pray and I had to ask for forgiveness, you know, for, for support, for guidance, for I felt like I was going through a massive personality change that I was even sitting there. And I was crying. Like I was really, it was a highly emotional like experience. And then I felt this huge calm just settle over my whole body. And like, eat the egg. <laughs> so I went to the kitchen. Like I felt like I was going to go into like a like a like a psychedelic like ayahuasca ceremony or something like I felt like I was sitting there with some sort of shaman like about to have a crazy holy experience and then I put it on a plate had a little bit of salt next to me and I went to go sit down like I had candles lit I peeled the egg I took a bite and it was maybe the most delicious thing I've ever eaten in my whole entire life <laughs> and I get weirdly emotional sharing that because <sighs> yeah it really was a big thing and I knew like if this is not for me I'm gonna feel disgusted I'm gonna feel this is so gross I always thought egg was the most disgusting thing I mean I thought every animal food was so disgusting and horrible and it wasn't it wasn't I ate that egg feeling so so full I felt so full and then from that point it was like okay I think I think like a week later I had my second egg and then I probably had like one egg a week for a while like it was really this like strange rare thing that I was figuring out how I felt and and then I started really craving it really 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 craving it craving it to the point of it was like getting to wake up in the morning and I get, got to have that one egg with my breakfast. It was like I got to start my day with dessert, just craving it. And that really was the beginning of the end of me being vegan. And it took all of, yeah, pretty much all of like this whole past year of just being open to trying different kinds of foods being open to experimenting with some animal foods. What happens when I eat this? What happens if I change this? What happens if I add this into my life? And mainly the number one question that I keep asking myself that I stay till this moment asking myself is, and how do I feel? And how do I feel? And I have since also had meat and I have had dairy, and I have tried a really wide variety of foods that I have deprived myself of for the last decade. And I have done that intentionally, and I have done that with, you know, really with, with a sacred intention. 
If you don't know much about the egg industry, you may think vegans are a bit nutty for being opposed to eating eggs from some backyard chickens. What's the harm? Well, backyard chickens are often purchased from egg farms that cull male chicks and keep hens in cruel conditions. When you purchase these animals, you're supporting this industry. But let's say you rescue some chickens. What's the problem there? These animals have been artificially bred to lay over 300 eggs a year. Naturally, chickens used to lay around 12 to 15 eggs a year. Laying eggs is incredibly taxing on their bodies. Imagine having your period every single day, all year long. That would be exhausting. Animal sanctuaries that rescue chickens often give them birth control to reduce their egg output and make them more comfortable. That is the compassionate thing to do. Now, is there a problem eating those eggs? Not really. I mean, it's probably better to feed them to a carnivorous companion. But if you don't have a cat, then the choice is to either eat the egg or let it rot. I don't have an ethical issue with eating it. However, I highly doubt the small farm that Rachel got this egg from is giving birth control to their rescued chickens. Reducing their egg output would not be in their interest. And there lies the problem. When animals are viewed as commodities, they're subjected to more suffering. Another issue with the consumption of eggs from backyard chickens is the slippery slope to consuming eggs outside of this context, like at a friend's house or a restaurant, and then saying fuck it and going back to eating meat and dairy. Rachel is a prime example of this. What I knew is if I go this route and I eat this one egg, you know, which will be the first non-vegan thing I've had in like a decade, forever. <laughs> if, if I go down this road, it's like, I kind of knew there's no turning back. You know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm either going down this road, staying in my vegan box, or I'm not. I have since also had meat and I have had dairy. In a follow-up podcast, she responds to the backlash she received. I can't believe someone would take the time to make a parody video about me. That's just so mean. I would never do something like that. Out of curiosity, I had to see this parody video she was referring to. And of course, it was from my OG yoga inspiration, Michelle, aka Banana Blondie Yoga, the queen of ex-vegan parody content. Hello friends, I am nervous. Nervous, nervous, nervous to record this podcast. I have a secret. I am no longer vegan. I'm obviously very brave because I know I'm going to get hate. Now, I just ask that if you are having an emotional reaction to this, that you just keep it to yourself. Shh. I have made an entire career of being on social media and sharing my life with you guys. And your support has made me a lot of money. But while I do really enjoy sharing my thoughts and feelings with you guys on my podcast, my daily podcast, where I talk by myself for hours every week and share everything I think of, if you guys have any thoughts or feelings or emotions that come up about that, please just keep them to yourself. I'm really not interested in an exchange here or a back and forth. This is just me like having diarrhea of the mouth and just talking at you guys. But keep your thoughts, opinions, and emotions to yourself. Thank you very much. I'm so brave. I'm so brave. The best thing about not being vegan is just being free of that label. Just, I feel so free. When I was vegan, I was in a box, in a box, and I couldn't get out of the box. Very scary in the box, you know? But now I'm free. I'm free and it's so amazing. I get to go to restaurants, you guys, and just order anything I want. I just feel so free. Even though the animals aren't free and they're still kind of in that box, like I'm free. Me, and I feel good. My inner intuitivity, intuitiveness, told me to move back to Europe I return to a more ancestral way of eating where I'm like really connected to the earth. Veganism is disconnected from the earth. Veganism is disconnected from the earth because vegan ice cream comes in packaging. It comes in packaging and packaging is bad for the environment. Therefore, veganism is bad for the environment. Yes, I got it. Veganism is bad for the environment. The most important thing about this is I get to eat dairy. I love dairy. Dairy is so good. Just go buy a bunch of lamb and get your own cow. Eat the raw milk. When it gets old, then you just kill it in the ancestral ceremonial sacred way. 
and it's all okay. Everyone can do that, right? There's like enough land for that. And you guys have, you guys have money to go, to go do that like homestead thing, right? I have freedom and joy. Fuck the animals. Who gives a fuck about the animals? My diet is about me. 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 Also, I wanted to tell you guys about this egg. The comments were filled with people accusing her of being a hateful bully. Like, how cruel of you to tear down another woman. Some yoga teacher you are. You need to review your yoga sutras. So let's take a look at the yoga sutras. The first two yoga sutras are called the yamas and the niyamas. Ahimsa is the first yama, which translates to non-violence. Satya, the second yama, translates to truthfulness. Asteya, the third yama, translates to non-stealing. And Brahmacharya, the fourth yama, translates to moderation of the senses. So far, Yoga Girl is violating all four. Meat involves violence. Eggs and dairy involve stealing. By consuming meat, dairy, and eggs, she is violating Ahimsa and Asteya. Her podcast is chock full of bullshit, violating Satya. And she describes herself practically orgasming over an egg and feeling this intense desire for more the following week. You could argue that she is violating Brahmacharya here, as she is being driven by sensual pleasure. One of the niyamas, tapas, is defined as self-discipline. Succumbing to desires that violate several yamas demonstrates a lack of self-discipline. Sounds like all of y'all in the comments need to review your yoga sutras, okay? Here's why I don't feel bad partaking in the roast of yoga girl as a yogi. I know the difference between being nice and being kind. Nice is defined as pleasing and agreeable, whereas kind is defined as showing compassion and benevolence. It's not always nice to be kind. The yogic philosophy is about kindness, and as we just discussed, it's also about truthfulness. Is Michelle being nice by making fun of Rachel? Not really. But is she being unkind? No. She is being honest and defending animals, who are the real victims here. Rachel and her followers rushing to defend her are the real bullies in this situation. They are causing harm to innocent animals, and then turning around and playing the victim when they're called out for their harmful behavior. They're cry bullies. I also know the difference between negative peace and positive peace. Negative peace is the absence of tension, whereas positive peace is the presence of justice. In the words of Martin Luther King, injustice must be exposed, with all the tension its exposure creates, to the light of human conscience and the air of national opinion before it can be cured. Exploiting animals is an injustice. Vegans like Michelle are advocating for positive peace. Rachel and her loyal followers are advocating for negative peace. Stop arguing, stop causing division, keep your judgment and opinions to yourself. This is toxic positivity. Life is not all love and light. Sweeping negativity under the rug doesn't actually help anyone. Spiritual anti-veganism is an example of spiritual bypassing. It's avoiding the inner work of questioning what you've been taught and confronting your ego. It's using spiritual language to make very ego-driven behavior sound altruistic. So I decided I'm gonna be a homesteader and have my own chickens and kill my own animals in like a very ceremonial, ancestral, sacred way. Ceremonially sacred, ancestral killings connected with the earth. True spiritual enlightenment comes from confronting the darkness. All these fake-ass love and light yogis on Instagram are doing a spiritual bypass by ignoring the horrific reality of animal agriculture and suppressing conversation about it. Rachel is asking for tolerance that she doesn't deserve. Michelle said it so well in her caption on Instagram. I love vegans and non-vegans alike, but this had to be done, especially after she requested that everyone keep their emotions to themselves so she can stay in her safe emotional space whilst the animals suffer. If you have built a successful career on social media based on the support of your audience, please have enough respect for those people to hold space for their feelings when you do a 180 on the ethical stance that many have come to follow you for. Veganism is not about your identity, your feelings, or even your diet. It's about the animals. 
Michelle isn't intolerant of non-vegans. She's intolerant of anti-vegan nonsense. But Rachel isn't anti-vegan. She respects other people's choice to be vegan. All she's asking for is respect in return. Bullshit. You can't demand respect for actions that are disrespectful to others. Her dietary choices harm others. The message she put out is categorically anti-vegan because as an influencer, she is influencing people to abandon veganism. Her narrative conflicts with the vegan narrative. Next, I want to talk about this idea that it's okay to criticize ideas, but it's wrong to target individuals who promote said ideas. I simply disagree. I don't see how it's wrong to criticize a public figure on a public platform for their promotion of harmful ideas. My issue isn't targeted criticism, it's unfair criticism and legitimate harassment. Poking fun of someone who is spreading a harmful message is punching up and punching up is fair game. Saying things like you deserve to be raped is awful and definitely constitutes harassment. But Michelle didn't say anything close to that. Rachel did a lot of damage with her no longer vegan announcement, and Michelle is doing some playful damage control. If Michelle were to make a vague post addressing the ideas Rachel shared without naming or tagging her, her post wouldn't have reached her target audience, which is Rachel's audience. Targeted criticism gets more attention. Attention-seeking is not inherently bad. Again, it's only a problem if the criticism is unfair. There were a lot of comments in the same vein about how sad and pathetic it is to spend your time making a video about another person. This is criticism I've received myself. You must have a lot of time on your hands. Yes, I do in fact think it's a productive use of my time to counter harmful messaging online by making targeted response videos. Considering my goal as a content creator is to share a message I feel is important, it's actually a better use of my time to make content that I know will get more attention. If you disagree and prefer content that doesn't target individuals, that's fine. But have some perspective. Consuming and promoting the consumption of animal products is objectively more harmful than making fun of someone on the internet. Be honest with yourself. Would you rather be exploited and killed for a sandwich or receive public criticism? And to the vegans in the comment section saying, this isn't how we should be advocating for veganism, please realize that what you're doing is holding vegans to an impossibly high standard, yet holding carnists to an incredibly low standard. A parody video is worth your criticism, but killing animals? We shouldn't criticize. We should keep our opinions to ourselves and just lead by example. Why don't you just lead by example then and not make parody videos? By criticizing vegans for criticizing carnists, you're upholding negative peace. This is the attitude of the white moderate Martin Luther King famously criticized, who is more devoted to order than to justice. Also, it's important to highlight that pick me vegans have no evidence that this type of advocacy is harmful to the cause. They insist that it is, but on what basis? People reacting defensively and saying things like, I'm gonna eat more meat now, is not evidence because persuasion is a complex, drawn out process. The sleeper effect is a phenomenon in social psychology that explains the delayed response to a persuasive message. A message is initially discounted, but it essentially goes to sleep in the back of our minds. It has the potential to be awakened and reconsidered when the person is confronted with information from another source that challenges whatever justification they use to discount it. In other words, the fact that a message stirs up feelings of anger or shame and doesn't prompt immediate behavior change doesn't mean that the message was not persuasive. On the other hand, humor is recognized as a powerful political tool. Satire has been used by activists throughout history to bring about social change. And keep in mind that there is value in content that doesn't aim to convince people who aren't on board, but rather to provide stress relief for those who are. Keeping activists active is just as important as recruiting new ones, and laughter helps us avoid burnout. Lastly, there's a common thread among spiritual anti-vegans that I want to discuss, which is this obsession with listening to your intuition. It can be wise to trust your intuition when it comes to certain things, but intuition is not science. Our intuition is not always right. 
I am for intuitive eating in the sense that I prefer to listen to my hunger cues rather than count calories or macros, but I'm still mindful of what I eat. I try to choose whole grains over refined grains and limit my refined sugar intake to less than 24 grams a day and saturated fat intake to less than 16 grams. These decisions are based on decades of nutrition science, not my intuition or what my fucking ancestors ate. This ancestral diet BS is both an appeal to nature and an appeal to tradition. It's logically fallacious. Sure, we evolved eating meat, but evolution doesn't care about longevity. Evolution only cares about making it to reproductive age. Our ancestors were just trying to survive. They had limited options and limited knowledge. Why on earth would we try to emulate their behavior? It's not that I don't value ancient wisdom. I do. But what I consider to be ancient wisdom is the stuff that's compatible with modern science. If something we thought was true for generations has been falsified by science, it's not wisdom, it's pseudoscience. Spirituality is not inherently incompatible with science, but unfortunately, spirituality is often associated with people like Yoga Girl, who value things like intuition over the scientific method. And this shit should be ridiculed, because it's ridiculous. In fact, I feel that it is my dharma to call out bullshit like this. Thank you so much for watching, please give this video a thumbs up, and if you've made it this far, post the word journey in the comments. Alright, peace out. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them uh, When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, nah, no meat now How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan, man How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat